Um, I um, will then start by just uh, uh, saying a few words about the model of uh, competencies for uh, democratic culture and explain Yes, so um, the framework uh, that uh, Milano uh, mentioned um, is uh, built around the model of competencies. This model of competencies has been developed by a group of experts from uh, different countries and from different fields of study um, based on an inductive process. It was not um, a process in which a model of competencies was developed uh, from a theoretical perspective uh, and then tested on the ground, but was built based on pre-existing models of competencies, analyzed, um, organized, um, and uh, uh, structured um, in a way uh, to take into account the focus um, that was given to, uh, to this group, that was to see what are the competencies that citizens need um, in a democratic society. So we, we use the word democratic culture to emphasize that um, we want to uh, consider a society which does not have only institutions and laws and to function as a democracy, but also citizens who agree with the principles, who uh, uh, incorporate the values and the principles of uh, uh, democratic, uh, democratic life that does building together um, a culture of democracy. Um, and in this model there is also a combination of elements from two fields of work uh, uh, of the Council of Europe uh, which are related to, um, to the education for democracy and to promotion of democracy and human rights on one side and on the other side uh, intercultural competence and the promotion of intercultural dialogue. So all, both these elements are um, reflected in the model. The model, as I said, was built by uh, looking at over 100 existing models of competences and only uh, compositional models were selected, uh, uh, so mo models of competences that only reflect different um, elements, uh, a structure um, of, uh, of competences, not developmental models or other types of, of models. Um, some of them uh, with a solid empirical background and a long uh, track record of uh, use in different uh, um, fields and others uh, um, more theoretical or uh, more related to the area of education. Um, the, the, all these 100 and something models of competences were deconstructed uh, in order to see what are the elements which are common, which are uh, core to most of the models. And then they were reorganized, restructured, restructured uh, to uh, result uh, in, uh, in the model that I'm going to show you in, in a moment. But uh, before I... Uh, I present to you the model, I just want to underline the fact that um, this uh, uh, model of competences is uh, also uh, something that is now very high on the political agenda of the Council of Europe. It uh, reflects also a, a distinction that is made in uh, uh, several Council of Europe documents which emphasize that the role of education systems uh, is to consider four types of uh, uh, roles, uh, four types of dim four, four dimensions. Uh, the dimension of relation related to personal development, that uh, dimension um, related uh, to the development of, of science, uh, the dimension related to the professional development, but uh, the fourth one, very important, the dimension related to life in society. Uh, so the development of the competencies of citizens. And considering that, uh, this uh, model of competences has been submitted to um, the ministers of education uh, of the member states of the Council of Europe uh, in their meeting uh, in Brussels in April last year, which actually uh, took place very shortly after the uh, terrorist attacks in Brussels. 
um, and received uh, in the final declaration of the meeting uh, endorsement uh, from the Ministers of Education, endorsement which was renewed um, recently um, in March this year in a meeting of the Ministers of Education in Nicosia, in Cyprus. And uh, uh, then the Council of Europe uh, was encouraged to continue the work to develop the framework of competences around uh, this model. And the model uh, was developed also considering the need to have something relevant for all the levels of education, something that is useful from very small age up to university education and adult education uh, as well. It was not uh, very easy and also considering uh, the European dimension and the diversity uh, of the education systems uh, that we have in Europe. Um, so, uh, what uh, is this model for those who have not seen it? Uh, there are details about the model accessible on the Council of Europe website on uh, coe.in slash competencies, where this publication which describes the model is available in French and English and summaries in several other languages. And the model is uh, this one. Uh, so the model consists of um, values, attitudes, skills, and knowledge and critical understanding. And this is the order we prefer to speak about the different parts of the model. And as you can see, it has uh, 20 elements which are um, quite different uh, between them. So we have uh, three types of values uh, that reflect actually the key values and the key elements of the work of the Council of Europe. You see the valuing of digni human dignity and, uh, and human rights, which is a, a key element of the work of the Council of Europe. You see also valuing democracy uh, and rule of law, but also justice, fairness, equality, as well as the valuing of cultural diversity, which is also uh, important uh, in general and for the Council of Europe as well. Then. Um, another element, uh, th so this is a very important element. Not all the models of competences have the values included. It was a choice made by the group to include the values. Um, and that was uh, uh, afterwards confirmed by similar uh, efforts, uh, similar uh, uh, activities done by uh, different uh, scholars uh, in the academic world, but also by um, other international organizations which tend to go in the same direction, like UNESCO and the OECD. And uh, so the first important element is the presence of the values. This, the second uh, structural element, which is uh, characteristic to this model of competences, is the fact that we uh, systematically associate knowledge with critical understanding. Uh, you see that uh, there are many models uh, of competences which speak about knowledge, skills, and, co and, uh, and attitudes. But um, uh, here we have knowledge systematically associated with critical understanding. Um, and this is a, a, another specificity of the model. Another element is that we have, um, in the, particularly in the other uh, type elements of the model, in the attitudes and uh, the skills, we have a combination of um, elements which are quite clearly defined in social studies, um, and there are concepts on which there is work, there are instruments uh, for assessment, there, there is uh, a lot of development, and there are others uh, which are not so clearly um, uh, organized uh, in the, from the academic perspective, and uh, also some which are very complex, that include different, uh, different elements, uh, as well as uh, some which in the scientific literature have different types of uh, um, uh, understandings and uh, different uh, ways of being uh, addressed. For example, um, we have uh, tolerance of ambiguity or self-efficacy, which are quite clear, uh, clearly defined in, in social science. But uh, in terms of empathy, for example, there are different uh, approaches. There are approaches looking at empathy as an attitude, while here we uh, look at empathy as a skill. Um, and in the case of others, uh, it was even more problematic. And uh, probably one of the most problematic was 
the development of the concept of respect, which is also, I think, really relevant for our discussion here. Um, why uh, was this interesting? Because there is no uh, commonly agreed uh, understanding of the concept of respect, uh, and it was also because we wanted uh, to include in our definition of respect as the attitude uh, part of, of uh, the CDC model, um, to include references to situations where you are facing um, somebody with whom you have a fundamental disagreement. It is very easy to show respect to, towards somebody uh, who shares the same values, the same ideas, uh, uh, and uh, uh, with whom you have a lot of, thing, of things in common, but it's more, more difficult uh, to show respect towards a person uh, while at the same time disagreeing fundamentally with some of the person's uh, options, ideas, uh, and behaviors. Uh, so this is what, how, we, how we see this, uh, this element. And then you can also see that there is a very strong uh, presence of elements related to language and communication in the model, which have been considered uh, extremely important, and they are reflected both in the skills and in the part of uh, knowledge and critical understanding. And of course, some of these elements have many other things uh, in there, the, the content in the definition, because they are uh, complex um, entities, and uh, so there is a need to, to go deeper uh, to, to understand uh, what we mean in the model by, by these concepts. But um, it was also difficult to set the line, what kinds of, what kind of uh, elements of competence we include in the model and what we keep outside. How we distinguish between things that are generally uh, necessary, like literacy or uh, even digital literacy, uh, and uh, things that are specifically necessary to be included in, in this model. So we ended up with uh, this uh, structure with the 20 elements. And uh, on each of these 20 elements, there has been a work to define descriptors of competence. And uh, we have went through a process of uh, uh, identifying and select, selecting uh, descriptors of, of competence, in which uh, we uh, uh, included, involved uh, education professionals, mostly teachers, school teachers, but also uh, some higher education, um, professionals and uh, adult education and teacher training professionals who contributed to the testing of the competence descriptors and we started from um, uh, more than 1,200 uh, competence descriptors for uh, all these elements and we ended up recently by identifying a set of uh, 130 uh, or more or less 130 key descriptors which uh, ref uh, uh, reflect uh, different three levels of proficiency for each of these 20 uh, elements of the CDC model. Um, and uh, this, uh, the model with these 20 elements, together with the descriptors um, of competence and together with the support documents which started to be developed by uh, the CDC working group, uh, are all part of this um, uh, reference framework of uh, competences for democratic culture, which is to be finalized in its main form uh, this year and presented in uh, October uh, here uh, in this country, actually, at the, at the for Prague Forum. And um, then it will be continued with other, other materials also related to the use of this model um, and the uh, descriptors in different areas of work, at different levels of education and in, on different specific topics uh, on, in which um, this could be useful and relevant. And I believe that the topic of this conference is interesting, uh, is relevant to address from the perspective of this competence model. Um, and I will talk um, just briefly about <coughs> some issues that came to my mind when thinking about uh, this possible connection um, and basically uh, three elements um, I would like to address in, um, in my speech. 
the first um, is related to the connection between the CPC. Um, I apologize if I'm going to use this acronym, so Competences for Democratic Culture, um, and plagiarism um, from different perspectives, considering what we do, what we can do in our education institutions, in higher education particularly, uh, to uh, develop the, uh, cap the capacity of the, of the students to, uh, to deal with plagiarism. Uh, so we uh, can make a connection between uh, the competencies and what can be done in universities, for example, in higher education institutions where, which are training students. Um, and then we can also see um, at a more general level the relationship between the CDC framework and the, uh, the work on academic integrity uh, in general. Now, the first uh, issue that uh, I want to address is about uh, awareness. Uh, it's of course proven by research that uh, many of the students who are uh, uh, engaging in plagiarism are not aware that it's, it's something wrong that they are doing. They are not aware that they are uh, doing something that is not uh, acceptable, that shouldn't be done. So I think it's very important to, to work on, uh, on building awareness. And I think the connection that we can make, for example, with uh, valuing uh, fairness and equality, we can look back at the model, um, and um, um, uh, for, for example, this, this element of value in general is very important to uh, build this kind of awareness. <coughs> of course, it is important to show that uh, when students, for example, uh, have uh, uh, a better outcome, produce something better, but in unfair way, uh, with unfair means, this is something that is not valued, not accepted in a university. And of course this can be also connected with uh, valuing of the human rights and the rule of law. We have norms, we have rules, um, and it's very important also to accept that even this is the principle of rule of law, even when we, don't, we disagree with some rules, we comply with the rules and we want to we, we take an action to propose changes in the rules when this is necessary. But it's very important also to build this kind of awareness uh, based on, uh, which can be built on, on the principles of uh, rule of law. And I think this, in this case, it's uh, important to reflect also on um, the idea of respecting the rules regarding plagiarism, for example, but also preserving the uh, presumption of innocence. In semi, many, several cases, there is the idea that, for example, in the case of, uh, of quoting secondary sources or when it comes to you using previously, um, um, previously edited materials that, that uh, the author did, in these cases, in many cases, you have a tendency of having a presumption of guilt, and you have to show that you didn't, uh, you, you you did it correctly. And I think this is very important to uh, to uh, be aware of, and it's important to um, keep the presumption of innocence as a as a key principle uh, in relation to generally the awareness of uh, integrity issues uh, in in higher education. And of course, this uh, idea of awareness, why is it important, why is it bad, and why is it important to be aware of, or aware of it, is related very much to the um, issue of uh, responsibility, uh, and it can be also related to, um, to the issue of empathy, for example, to uh, understand why it's not wrong, it's also important to be able to put yourself in the place of the other. Um, and of course, uh, this means uh, uh, being very clear with the students about what is expected from them. There are cases in higher education institutions where children, uh, stu not children, students are um, actually having the idea that they, have, they are expected not to produce uh, original work, but to show what they learn, what they know. Uh, so it has to be clear that sometimes at uh, uh, junior level it could be acceptable 
uh, some kind, some degree of uh, plagiarism, but we have to be aware uh, that this is not the same as producing uh, an original work. Um, the, so these are some reflections related to the first idea about awareness. Now, I think another important element to which the CDC model can uh, bring some uh, useful ideas is the idea of uh, identifying plagiarism. I think this is an important skill and skill ability that students need to have. They need to be able to identify plagiarism that they do and uh, also plagiarism in uh, the works that they, they see and their colleagues and so on. So uh, having this ability of identifying plagiarism is, is very important. Um, and for this, we have several elements uh, in the model which can be useful. For example, we have the uh, skills of listening and observing. Um, here we have the analytical and critical thinking skills, of course, that enable us to look at, uh, at the document and uh, um, identify also the elements that um, uh, reflect the plagiarism. Uh, and, of course, all the elements related to critical understanding uh, are relevant for, for this process. So, we want to, to uh, have the students develop this, these competences uh, which able, enable them to uh, identify, uh, identify plagiarists. Now, if we move to thinking about um, how to develop the actual ability of the, of the students to avoid doing uh, plagiarism in their work. Uh, there are also several um, elements in the uh, CDC model that could be uh, relevant for this reflection. So uh, they are aware that it's not uh, the right thing. They are able to say what is and what is not plagiarism, although you know very well, better than me, that sometimes it's not easy to distinguish what is and what is not plagiarism. But uh, um, then they, they do the work. They have to uh, put in practice this. And of course, there are several elements. For, of course, one element which is important is uh, the autonomous learning skills, where you have to consistently uh, work on developing the abilities that you have to learn and to develop yourself. And that means that you reflect on what you learn and uh, you will aim at doing it better uh, in the future. And this is very important also to develop the ability to write an academic paper uh, complying with the uh, integrity criteria and the standards. Um, then, of course, again, the analytical and critical thinking skills are extremely important. You need them to produce any kind of uh, uh, original work uh, and so of course uh, uh, this is also uh, related to the sorry to the attitude uh, of responsibility you have to consider what you are uh, what you're writing and consider the consequences and considering also that um, sometimes um, the approach that students might take can be an approach uh, related to being very skilled at hiding plagiarism, not necessarily developing uh, original work, but doing it in a very good way so that others don't realize that uh, they plagiarize. So this is uh, extremely important. And of course there is then uh, all the um, uh, part related to language and communication, because developing an academic paper means Using language means uh, uh, selecting a certain style, means using uh, uh, words and concepts in a certain way. So all the uh, linguistic, uh, communicative and plurilingual skills together with the elements of knowledge and critical understanding of language and communication are uh, relevant for all the process of developing a, a scientific discourse. And of course, there is one, um, one other element, an attitude that is particularly important to consider in this context, and this is self-efficacy. 
um, because uh, they, yeah, which means the ability to uh, the the attitude of uh, uh, being uh, uh, confident that you are able to do things, you are able to achieve your goals, to to achieve your objectives, um, and. Um, it's very important to uh, build this attitude in students, the uh, capacity that, that the, the attitude that they have the capacity to do something original. Uh, this can be built also by working gradually and by uh, encouraging uh, uh, the, the work and uh, uh, also by stimulating a reflection on the work that is being done uh, with uh, an emphasis on the, the development of self -efficacy. And then there is the other uh, issue, uh, which is um, a little bit maybe even more sensitive, which is related to the reaction to prejudice. What do you do when you see others uh, prejudice? What do you do when you see colleagues uh, who are engaging in prejudice? And this model of competences for democratic culture is uh, for us, it's, it has this kind of question also in relation to other things. What do you do when you see racist behavior? What do you do when you see sexist uh, attitudes? What it's, it's about your presence as citizen in a group, in a society, when you see behaviors which are not complying with the values uh, of, that are here in the model. So basically, when you see somebody which is not fair, which is not, which is doing something that is wrong, uh, budgeting a document, then the question is, what do you do? Um, and um, of course, here there are uh, maybe several elements that can be uh, uh, included in the reflection. The first is related to uh, the, gen the the way you can generate in. Uh, in a university, a general atmosphere which is conducive to confidence, to the idea that, okay, you can be wrong, uh, but you accept from the others feedback that help you improve. So this is related to the idea of the presumption of innocence. Uh, so you don't assume the other is bad uh, uh, and uh, trying to, to get necessarily an unfair advantage, but when you get... Um, uh, to see, you see something that is not right. Uh, if the atmosphere is is right, then others will will be encouraged to say, "Well, I think this is not the right way to do it. You you could do it uh, in another way." And this means that it, this this is related to the cooperation skills, to the idea of working together, and building together also uh, the skills and the the, the production <coughs> documents. Of course, sometimes it's not working, it's not uh, everybody accepting uh, the other's opinion when, when it's not uh, um, necessarily the, the, what you expected. So therefore you need conflict resolution skills. It's important also in this kind of context to have ability to deal, to manage conflicts. Um, and um, uh, there is also uh, the issue of uh, respect and responsibility and respect, as I said, is uh, understood in our <coughs> way as the idea that you respect the person, but you can show very clearly, explicitly disagreement with the behaviors or with the um, attitudes and the values of the other. But you show it in a respectful way. And this is also related to linguistic, linguistic communicative, and plurilingual skills, because in many situations, it matters very much how you say the thing. So you have identified something, you have something to communicate. It's very important how you, uh, you do it, with what attitudes and with what skills, so that the message is received and uh, that uh, you, you know, the result is the one expected. That, that, that means the idea of changing, of improving in the future and not uh, rejection, not uh, conflict, and uh, not uh, uh, the, the engaging in, in, in negative uh, interactions. Um, so, um, of course, in this situation of um, uh, 
when it uh, comes to reaction to situations of apathy, it's very uh, of uh, of reacting to plagiarism, it's very important to uh, emphasize also the empathy. Because when you want to communicate to the other, with the other, it's very important to think from the perspective of the other to understand also the feelings, not only the thoughts, because here in the way we define empathy, both elements, both the cognitive and the emotional components are uh, included. Um, and they are, all, they are also um, very important in um, uh, engaging in the uh, correct and effective uh, interaction, reaction to a situation of uh, plagiarism identified. And of course, uh, uh, now I would move to maybe some of these elements can, can uh, be recalled when we speak about generally the possible connections between the CDC, the Competences of Democratic uh, Culture, and um, academic integrity in general. And there are um, relations possible in both ways. Uh, I think that by having a clear policy at university level to address uh, the issue of academic integrity, including plagiarism, this, of course, develops the CDC. Because we want the CDC to be developed across the education system from the very small age to the university. But if we have a university in which uh, academic integrity is put forward in an explicit way as a, as a value of the, of the institution and there are mechanisms to uh, work around it um, in a proper way, this certainly develops competences for democratic culture. So uh, this means for example, thinking that it's not ne only uh, necessary to uh, have a set of rules that are communicated to uh, students, uh, what they are not allowed to do. Uh, because based on, on this model, it's very important to understand the rules, to agree with the rules, to internalize the rules. So the rules should not be just communicated and imposed and enforced, but they should be understood, they should be explained, uh, and they should be uh, illustrated with maybe examples and cases uh, so that, uh, um, that students uh, reflect and get their own understanding of what this means and why it, 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 they, are, they make sense. And of course, this also includes addressing more controversial issues and sensitive issues, because it's not always obvious what is and what is not, why a rule is in this way and not in the other way. So there should be an opportunity for debate in which different options can be uh, shared, different points of view can be confronted and analyzed in an open way based on respect and uh, valuing dignity and so on, uh, so that they there is this kind of internal um, acceptance of the rules and the, the acceptance also of the idea that there are different opinions and this can be related also to the, uh, the one of the attitudes in the world the tolerance of ambiguity the, uh, accepting that not everybody has to have the same view and the same uh, perspective on things um, and uh, I think also Addressing academic integrity uh, means, from this perspective, that we can have uh, academic integrity as a goal, not um, uh, as an educational goal. So we, we, we are not having it as a judgment. We say, you have it, you don't have it. We want to build it. We want to build it together. That means we have to avoid blaming and labeling and saying, you are wrong, you are bad, but uh, to encourage reflection and development of on these principles and values. Um, this uh, also means, I think, to have mechanisms that uh, include a fair, fair treatment procedures so that everybody is treated the same way. There are no uh, preferences, preferential treatment, uh, that uh, there is a prompt reaction when there is something uh, clearly uh, as a problem, that there is some, uh, that the problem is addressed, not ignored, um, and that there are transparent procedures um, for uh, addressing a situation and for communicating the result uh, to everybody. So that there is 
this kind of, uh, of democratic and transparent uh, and fair uh, attitude uh, to build this. And of course, uh, I would add also the importance of role models, of the, the, uh, the teachers and the researchers who can have a very important impact as role models in promoting this to the students. So, uh, and, of, and I would add also the idea of recognizing the progress. If we have, um, if we have uh, um, academic integrity as a goal, then we, as an educational goal, then we should recognize when something is better, something is improved, not only uh, focus on uh, elements that are wrong and problematic. And if this is done, all the students and all the members of the academic community develop their competencies for democratic culture, which is of course good for the academia, but it's also good for the society in general, because the impact of this goes, of course, far beyond uh, uh, the, the institution into the society. And a few words only um, about uh, the last point, the idea that um, the promoting the CDC um, may enhance academic integrity uh, in general, uh, just to refer to the fact that um, we have been thinking in a group, we are working now on a document which is for the school level, and which is promoting the idea of the whole school approach uh, in promoting CDC. And we believe that the same kind of approach, a whole institution approach, is valid also in uh, at the higher education. So that it's not only a separate component, a, a separate committee charged with integrity or uh, something that is specifically only uh, uh, included in, the, in a, in a s special uh, kind of work, but it's something that is uh, reflected, all this CDC reflected in all the life of the university, in all what is done in the teaching process, in the practical activities, in the interactions between the teachers and students, in the interactions between students, in the participation of students to the management, to the life of the university, and all the aspects uh, of the institution. Of course, this should be reflected in the university charters, in the, uh, not only with regards to plagiarism, but as general messages, because if we uh, develop this kind of uh, atmosphere, general atmosphere in the university. Uh, this is uh, uh, generating, of course, a, a positive uh, attitude towards the idea of academic integrity and uh, uh, has m much more chances of uh, having all the students uh, appreciate the idea of integrity and then become contributors and uh, uh, contribute themselves to building uh, an in, uh, academic community be, uh, based on integrity. Thank you very much. I'll stop here and I think there are a few uh, minutes for yeah. comments or questions. Okay, okay thank you, Karin. So, uh, uh, questions? Thank you for a very interesting presentation. I have two questions, you know, because I started to make some analysis and discussion with myself. And um, the first question I have is, how do you draw a line between, for example, equality and respect? Is it so different? Uh, the next question is, um, for me, it seems that in one box, there is different weights or hierarchy between the terms. If give an example for clarification, for example, self-efficacy, it derives from responsibility. So when I, as a researcher, imagine, I say, okay, input process, output outcome. So I'm looking for this structure just from my own perspective. So could you just clarify these things? Thank you. Um, well, f we have the valuing uh, of equality. Uh, and so equality seen as a value um, and respect is an attitude. So, because and there, is, there are connections, we did not um, we did not um, emphasize yet at least the multiple connections between the different elements of the model, because there is not enough empirical evidence 
yet to consistently support them. But there are obviously connections. There are connections between the values and the attitudes. There are connections between the critical understanding and the critical skills. There are, there are multiple connections here. So the valuing uh, equality is one important thing, but also the attitude of respect based on the res valuing of human dignity, of human rights, and of equality is also important. So there are, there are these kind of factors. So of course, um, between responsibility of self-efficacy, uh, there are connections, but they're not, uh, they are, they, we consider them, we define them as independent elements, connected but independent. Um, and we had also the discussion between self-confidence and self-efficacy. Initially there were two, but now we consider that self-confidence is included in, self, uh, in our definition of self-efficacy. So we didn't put it separately, but responsibility has some elements which make it different. And although connected, we, we have it differently. I would like to add one small thing that we uh, often talk about the development of these competences in clusters. So it's in a specific kind of situation, for example, like working on an academic paper, you actually use, mobilize a combination of uh, several of these elements, and that happens in different kinds of social situations as well. So there are these kinds of uh, connections, and we don't want to see them as really things that are totally separated and independent. Okay. Other comments or questions? Okay. Thank you very much, likewise, for your, for your speech. Uh, um, I would have likewise two, two questions. Uh, um, I got the impression that it's very important to think about the preconditions of developing democratic cultures, and therefore I think uh, this concept of, uh, of CDC competencies is very useful. But on the other hand, I got the impression that the model of CDC competencies is a very idealistic construction. So, do you know perhaps empirical examples uh, for places, for uh, locations where this kind of competencies could be successfully developed? Well, yes, I mean, we can say that uh, all the principles promoted by the Council of Europe are idealistic. There is no perfect democracy, for example, but it's that's, that's life, that's uh, life and that's society, and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't aim towards this. And I think this is a clear, clearly a giving a direction of what education systems should aim beyond just putting knowledge in the minds of the, of, of the children. So it, it has this kind of, of approach, and of course, now we have in the descriptors of competence that uh, I mentioned very briefly, we have identified for each of these elements three levels of proficiency. There are what we call basic, intermediate, and advanced. Uh, even the basic level of competence actually to have these elements is quite significant. So it's not nothing, it's, it's very important. But of course, in all each of these, there are specific situations described in, by these descriptors of competence uh, which, uh, re which reflect a higher level of proficiency of these elements. So you will have a certain environment and certain groups of certain people would have would more or higher or lower level of proficiency of, of, of these elements, but the idea is to uh, do something to build the competences, start from what we have, and increase, uh, move to uh, the next uh, possible uh, level. Uh, and that's all we can do. I mean, we cannot build a perfect world by tomorrow, but we can uh, help moving uh, towards the prog progress, towards something that we know it will, will be better. Okay, yeah, the last question. Really interesting talk, and I, I do like the the model. I think it's a very useful and very uh, very practical uh, set of, uh, kind of values and principles. Um, what I was wondering about is I, I'm doing a lot of research in corruption, particularly in education across the world, and 
I, I wondered how you would see this being promoted and applied uh, in order to bring about the changes that you're trying to, uh, to do, particularly within education, because I think if you, if you start to make a change in education, that will then feed through into wider society. Yes, thank you. Well, that would be the subject of the next, uh, I mean, that I think will be discussed in the forum in Prague. Uh, and sorry to, but because I don't want to avoid the question, but it's really, that's what we want. Like, now we, we have worked on developing the model and developing the uh, descriptors and uh, validating the descriptors. Um, and now the main support documents are being developed and in these documents, the, the questions are exactly uh, these ones. How you use the, the, this model in different situations in education. Um, and these documents will be available by October. Uh, and then there will be a continuation because based on these main documents, there will be a need for specific tools and support materials uh, on, to promote uh, these elements. Um, and that goes for all the levels of education, of course. Um, and uh, if I think I think it's it's very important uh, also, also to consider with regards to the corruption uh, issue that, like I mentioned earlier, there are approaches that are complementing each other that could be useful for, based on this model. One is to prevent, to take, to do actions that create, they generate an atmosphere that is less likely to result in um, a behavior that is not uh, com compatible with the values, like corruption, like plagiarism, like uh, other, other things like that. So this is important, but of course this can be useful also in defining mechanisms of re reaction, of responding. Uh, and addressing the situation. So we see that both, both approaches as, as uh, pertinent as, uh, to address this as a, as a general um, preventative uh, approach promoting this, the CDC and to have this in mind when you design mechanisms for reaction. Yeah, uh, just to complement in a um, uh, concrete way, uh, next year in the Council of Europe we are going to establish four thematic groups that will be working for the in a kind of dialogue with member states in four areas the uh, curriculum development the assessment uh, teacher education pedagogy and the whole school approach and there are two other issues related to uh, higher education issues and also vocational and education uh, uh, schools so all these six areas will be dealt with in uh, uh, six thematic groups um, uh, in partnership with uh, representatives from ministries of education in member states. And so for two years we'll be focusing precisely on what you said already. So, yeah. Thank you, Kalin. Thank you for your... Uh,